maybe I'll do something funny like, Whoa! G'day guys, it's Sam here from Built Not Bought and today we're in Melbourne and we're at HQ here at Harrop Engineering and Performance. Harrop Engineering was founded in 1955 by Len Harrop and his wife Elsa, who started out producing weaving machines from a small shed in the Victorian suburb of Brunswick. The business grew steadily and they expanded into other areas including industrial food processing equipment and heavy haulage and earth moving accessories. In 1963, Len and Elsa's son Ron joined the business after completing a boiler making apprenticeship. Ron's enthusiasm for making things began at an early age. By the age of 10, he was welding together go-karts in the back shed. As a teenager, his passion extended to modifying cars, such as his first MGTC-powered Morris Minor, his much-loved Holden EH and his famous FJ. Ron's enhanced FJ quickly became the leader in its class for the quarter-mile competitions. Originally bought for $29, from racing identity Norm Beachy, it became known as Harrop's Howler. In the early 1970s, an association began with Harry Firth and the Holden Dealer team. This brought lots of work into Harrop Engineering's shop, and it soon became recognised that Harrop's equipment was the gear to have. Today, Harrop employs eight specialist engineers across design, quality, and production disciplines who form part of the total team of 55 dedicated staff delivering the quality and service for which Harrop Engineering has become renowned. I met with Heath Moore this afternoon to get an exclusive shop tour of Harrop's facility and in particular how they design and manufacture their popular air lockers and superchargers. I'll tell you what, it looks like there's a lot of machines sitting here. What's going on with this area? Well, this is a lot of our, um, our multitasking machines, so they can act like a lathe as well as a, a mill. He first took me through the manufacturing section of the plant. It's here that the design from Harrop and its parent companies come to life from just a raw casting. What's the relationship with Eaton? I do know Harrop is the brand, but you've yep. got to, like, there's the AdRad and your Eaton. How's all that work? So, AdRad's our parent company, and they're a, a radiator or heat exchanger specialist. So, yeah. the intercoolers, like in your supercharger kit, are, are manufactured by AdRad. We do the billet tanks and, and assemble and test them here at Harrop. Okay. But Eaton's technology is both the boosting, so the supercharger rotating group, which we'll have a look at, but also uh, on the traction side, the true track technology in terms of the way the gears work is theirs, okay. um, as is the e-locker. So they developed the e-locker for the military originally, and it's a genuine OEM type traction device. And that's why we're partnered with Eaton because um, They've got the durability and the quality to, to make the, the products last as long as they do. One of Harris' most successful products, especially in the four-wheel drive industry, is the e-locker. Now I wanted to get up close and personal with how these things are put together from start to finish. Alright, so the first stop here is the CAD room, where they do most of their design and development. During the design phase, products are 3D modelled to check for clearance issues and potential manufacturing problems. From there a prototype is made. This prototype is measured super accurately to within the micron as a future reference for quality control. Once this step's complete, we can go into full blown production. So these look familiar. Are we getting into the uh, e locker territory here? Yeah, that's right. So these are our very popular selectable locking diffs. Again, it's got the Harrop logo and the Eaton logo. So this is a, a cast iron casting that, that comes from oh, okay. um, comes from Sydney, and so then, they're not spun up or, or milled; they're actually no cast. poured out of, poured out of molten metal yep. iron, and then we fully machine them in our CNC machine. So you know you, you, you turn them on the lathe uh, to get this sort of profile. Before the milling happens, they look like that as a turned casting. We'll find a casting that shows it raw, but this has been turned like it would on a lathe, and then it gets milled to get the holes and everything. Okay, yeah, yeah. Cool. Once all the castings have been machined and checked in this area, they move on to the shed next door where assembly takes place. This is where the stuff gets real interesting. Alright, looks like shed number two, eh? Yeah, this used to be the foundry where all the aluminium yep. castings were done. Uh, oh, look at this place! Yeah, that's the Land Rover. Oh, this is, this is what I like, eh? 
this is, a this is what we're all about long, Forbies. long long term project the land rover so it's a corvette based engine it's an yeah. ls7 440 cube um, so it's not finished yet but well it's nearly ready to fire up we're just Ooh. getting we're just getting it plumbed so it runs the hurricane intake so it's yeah, na yeah. there's yeah. no there's no blower um but it's a sort of a 700 horsepower engine um, running fox shocks what's it going to be used for well, we were going to do like winch challenge type events, but mm. we went to Fink um, last year in the, the side by side, yep. and we reckon this could probably go right in class eight. So That's we just need to get it running. That's the priority at the moment, yeah, is yeah. To, to get it get it out there and do some testing. I wish but, I lived in Melbourne, eh? Come out and see this thing go. <laughs> well, we'll get you back for a steer. Oh, I would love that. I've got to get my car over here and I'll come, come wheeling with it. I'll race it. <laughs> So this is this is where all the e-lockers uh, come to life. I was pretty lucky to catch the boys on a day when they were actually putting together some of these lockers. Paul is an expert and a technician when it comes to these bits of kit. We used to do them in the other building and we've basically had to expand into here, move yeah. the foundry over to South Australia and um, you know, get all this racking here to support. It's been so popular. Mm. Um, they're a great product. Yeah. Once assembly is complete, Paul puts it on a test bench where he hooks up power to the locker, checks the locking mechanisms in both directions, boxes it, and gets it ready for shipping. Due to their application, the e lockers are a sealed unit and I don't normally get to see what's inside these things, so with this assembly I was able to see some of the spider gears in their raw form, which are heat treated, hardened, so they're a slightly different colour, ready to go straight to the centre of the locker. Yeah, so, yeah. extremely strong yeah. um, and that's, that's where the durability comes from. After seeing the process of the e-locker, I was keen to see how the superchargers followed suit. The black there, is that a paint like, or is it sort of... Yeah, that's powder coated. So powder -coated, um, yeah. we do so much of it internally at Harrop, but the decorative yeah. finishes, we do outsource that. Okay, so yeah. we've got our own boundary in Adelaide that casts the, the aluminium and it, come, yep. it's, it looks raw. Um, we send them out to be painted black, okay. uh, powder coated, and every mould is a single use. So you yep. basically tweak to make each housing. This is um, this is the 2650, so this yep. is the big boy. Yep. Um, but it's got that sort of textured finish because of the sand. And they're single use cars, so you smash them off and that's it. Yeah, but <laughs> you, we recycle the sand, yep. but you've got to make the moulds to okay. be able to pour the metal to make the casting. That's essentially what we get from the foundry. Uh, yep. So this is the 2300, like what you're running. Um, and you can see that sort of, that granular sort of finish that the sand leaves, but. Yeah, and they, that's all over it. So these gets all polished, does it? Uh, well, it's, when it's machined, it comes out smooth. Yeah, but once yeah. that's, once the paint goes over the top, so we, we wash this and then it gets sent to the powder coaters to get done in black. Yep. And then they get processed through the machine. So once all casting and powder coating has been completed outside of Harrop's workshop, they come back and all the CNC machining is completed in-house. From here, assembly can begin. So what phase is this? Like, is this how far into production is that? Have you gone through the first phase of like casting it and then how much drilling's been done on this? All the machining's been done. The machining's so this, been this, done. This, this bad boy's ready to have the rotating group put in it. Yep. And then it gets tested. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll have a look in here where they get. Yeah, cool. All right. So this next room is the supercharger assembly room where they put the blowers together. So Tang's our champion supercharger technician for assembling, essentially the, what we call the air pump. So that's the Eaton technology. Yep. So this is a 160 degree helix, and it's some people confuse a roots um, supercharger with a twin screw. So these rotors turn and the air flows around the outside, actually this way, okay. and, and out the discharge port, yep. whereas a compressor will like force the air down between the two. Uh, okay, so, so the air runs externally rather than through the middle. Yeah, it comes yeah. in and then flows around the outside because yep. it's spinning like this, yep. and then out the discharge port. Um, yep. These gears are obviously precision um, timed and... They look very accurate. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> but that's the, that's the same technology in yeah. a... Um, like an Audi V6 that's yep. supercharged, that's used the, exactly the same as this. Yep. So our philosophy is OEM technology for the aftermarket. This is a raw casting um, that has been powder coated black and, and fully machined. And what Tang's working through now is the assembly of the input shaft 
um, the hub, um, the, the isolator, so that then is able to be bolted to the, um, to the front of the housing and with the drive pulley on the front. So everything in the business is a, is a collection of sub-assemblies that, yeah. that get rolled up into a final kit in a box ready yeah. for a customer. Yeah. So I guess it's always more efficient to bulk manufacture parts in one area and then just get them all smashed together. This is the, the kitting room, kitting it out with fuel rails, injectors, lower manifold. Being a collection of sub-assemblies, this is where the other products from Eaton and Adrad come together to be put into the supercharger. That's something that people might be interested in, like a lot of your diesel guys have your turbos and they're intercooled, right? It's the same for a blower. Any type of compressed air is gonna heat up. So what the blowers do, because they're directly on top of the motor, you've only got a small window there where you can actually cool the air. So these are like mini water to air radiators almost that sit underneath the blower. And as the cool water comes in from your front mounted intercooler, it cools the air going into the intake manifold, or into the engine from yeah. your intake manifold. That's exactly right. So on so, the LS... So these are the Adrad produced ones. Yeah, yeah Adrad cores, and we, yeah. we machine these end tanks out of billet, and you've got sort of water in and water out. So... Going into the dungeon here. <laughs> What's going on? So this is the supercharger dyne cell. This is a... Um, this is actually off of Ford, so we did the OEM program for the Miami, so all of those XR8s yep. and FPV GTs had a Harrop HCV1900, which is what this is. Yep. Um, it's obviously turned up this way in the car, the logo's upside down because it blew up through a manifold and down into the cylinder heads. Okay. So this is really just a big electric motor, it's like a 100 kilowatt electric motor, and we've got full diagnostics on airflow, temperature, yep. Um, boost. We can we can open and close a valve to do uh, you know load cycles. Yep. We can change the RPM through the through the electric motor. Um, and every single supercharger gets tested on this rig, so yeah, okay. nothing leaves the building without being run. This is obviously a used unit, and we're probably doing some back to back assessment on yep. how it performed when it was brand new. Eden have got something like this in America. They've got a few of them yep. um, at their facility, but this is yeah this is world class in terms of yeah. boosting technology and, yeah. and instrumenting the performance. Um, in simple terms, the supercharger is just an air pump, yeah. but how it pumps the air and, and analyzing its efficiency is, yeah. is the difference between yeah. um, quality and guessing. These things sure make a racket. But I had to ask Heath how long a blower actually spends on this machine before it goes out the door. The normal production units might have a 7 to 10 minute yep. cycle. Yep. But what's interesting, if we're doing an OEM program or a brand new blower, they'll do like what's called a 300 hour durability cycle. Yeah, and that's okay. two and a half weeks non-stop. Yep. So we'll spin it right up to like maximum yep. RPM, we'll load it right up and it's basically to simulate the life cycle yep. of the blower on the car. So it looks like we're coming into the dyno and uh, performance area here. Yeah, so hey. this is our Harrop Performance Centre. We do yep. both 4x4 and, and sort of the high performance street cars and, yep. and race cars. I know what this is behind us. It's called the uh, Superato. I don't know if you guys have known, they're actually developing, they call it the Holden V8. You know, the SS Commodore Utes and that are no longer going to be produced, so this is the next best thing. It's got a supercharged LS in it and it's in a four-wheel drive, so it's what I'm all about. So what, what else is on this thing? Yeah, this has got method wheels, it's got Toyo's RT tyres, we've got uh, shockwork suspension, but it's, a, it's an LSA with our 2650 supercharger. Yeah. It's got the Commodore 6L80 transmission, so it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a beast off-road. It's, it's been out to the Simpson, it's back to get some work done to it, and um, yeah. we'll have to get you back to drive it sometime. Yeah, that'd be awesome, eh? Mm. It's the most similar thing to what I've built, I guess. So. Drag race? Yeah, <laughs> why not? <laughs> we'll meet halfway on the nullable. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that'd be a good idea. So this is acoustic uh, lines, walls, so the, the sound obviously gets attenuated. Um, yep. So you can run a car flat out here and it will be you know, less noisy outside than it would be on you know, next to one of the CNC machines. Yep. 
It's one of our Mustang customers. Uh, yeah, it's supercharged. So this is a 2300. It's a Coyote 5 litre. Definitely a different looking setup, obviously, for this application to get it to fit under the bonnet there. Yeah, so. it's inverted. It blows up through the core twice. It goes through the core at once and then through two separate sections of core back down into the cylinder heads. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but this is making you know, over 500 kilowatts at the hub, so it's, wow. it's pretty lively. So after spending the day at Harrop Engineering, I must say I was super impressed with how well these things are put together. The amount of workmanship, planning, designing and execution that goes into each and every product is next level. I want to say a big thank you to Heath, Jake, Julian and the team at Harrop Engineering for letting me come into the shop today. It was only a couple of days I was spending in Melbourne here, so for them to let me come and have a tour through the place was an absolute pleasure. I'm sure I'll be back in the future to see more of what these guys are going to be up to. But I know this is a slightly different sort of video for my channel, but I think it does fit into the theme of Built Not Bought to really see how these things are put together right from the bottom up. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and I will see you next time.